Hello everyone, welcome to 3ddesignacademy.com. In this lesson, we will learn about the circle tool. Now, the circle tool is located on the curves uh, in the palette, and as the name suggests, it is a tool used to create a circle. So all you have to do is click on the circle tool and just click anywhere on the modeling window, and you'll notice that uh, you get a circle like this. Now, it does look like a circle, but you will see that the CV structure is a little bit different from the, the usual curves that we create. And it is because the, uh, the periodic circle option is on. Now, this is by default, and you'll notice that the CV structure is a very, uh, the spacing between the CVs are very even. Now, if I turn the periodic circle off, you'll see that the menu changes a little bit. And when I click on the modeling window like this, you'll see that the CV structure is a little bit different. Now, I do tend to use this uh, uh, one a little bit more just because the, there are number, uh, less number of spans and the CV structure is a little bit cleaner. Now, there, uh, to be honest, I haven't seen uh, too much use case for this one unless uh, uh, for very specific purposes. So I usually, if I'm creating a circle, I usually tend to use a non-periodic circle. Now, let's do a little measurement because in alias, uh, the circles are actually not a perfect circle. So if I go to locators and I'm just going to go under distance, I'm going to pick radius and I'm just going to check on this and let me just click and hold and just move it around the circle. And you'll see that the radius actually changes from some somewhere between 49.99 to 50 and some. And for a peri uh, non-periodic circle, you'll see that the the radius is actually changing a little. Oh, actually, let me just try it again. You'll see that the radius is changing from actually 48 to 51. Now, if I add more data, of course, I'm going to get a more accurate uh, circle, but it is still not going to give me a perfect circle. So. What you need to do is if you want to get a perfect circle, you have to go to preferences and under construction options, you'll see that there's a rational flags options. So all you have to do is click on primitives and curves like this. And now when I do the circle again, I'm just going to snap over here. Oh, did it work? You'll get a different circle. The CV structure is a very different. And when I measure the radius, you'll see that it's a perfect radius of 50 all the way around. So now we got a perfect circle, but the CV structure is a little bit different. So you'll notice that it, depending on the situation, uh, you might want to switch between the, uh, you might want to turn the rational flags option off in the construction options over here. Now, the thing, of, uh, the thing about the rational flags is that doesn't matter it it really doesn't matter how many degrees you have on the circle because if you with the rational flags off and let me just show you guys with the rational flags off you'll notice uh, actually let's do this one so I'm just going to do a curve curvature and I'm going to just let's see min max radius on I'm just going to show you guys the difference. Now, you'll see that the minimum radius on this uh, circle is a 48.9 and it uh, ranges to 51. Now, let me just delete this one. And let's see, I'm just going to go double click on the circle and I'm going to say degree six. And well, the CV structure is a little bit different. And now let's do a measurement again. So because of there's more data, you'll see that the circle is more circular. So it, uh, the radius actually ranges from nine, uh, 40, what looks like 49.9 to 50, which is a lot better than this one. So even uh, if you add more data, it's going to be more accurate and the uh, tolerance between the min and the max is going to be smaller. However, it is never going to give you a perfect circle. So when you want to create a perfect circle, uh, you have to make sure to turn the primitives and the curves on the ration, on the rational flags. Okay. So, oh, uh, actually, let me just go back to explaining 
the rational flags. Okay, so the interesting thing is, it doesn't matter what degree, you're always going to get a perfect circle with the rational flags on. So you'll see that this is a degree six, uh, 19 span curve, and it has a minimum and maximum radius of 50. It's a perfect circle. Now let's see if I can reduce it to three. You'll notice the CV structure is a little bit uh, very similar to this one, but you'll notice that it's a little bit uh, less, uh, there are less CVs and less number of CVs, but it is still a perfect circle. It's 50 uh, minimum uh, and maximum radius of 50. Now let's see if I can go even less, like this. And when I do a measurement, still a perfect circle. So doesn't matter what degree you have uh, rational flags, if the rational flags options are on, it's always going to give you a perfect circle like this. Okay, so uh, let's turn that off and let's go back to construction options and I'm just going to actually turn this off because I'm going to show you guys something that you can do with the circle tool that might be a little bit unique. So I'm just going to actually go back to the periodic circle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reduce the degree to one and I'm going to show you guys how to create multi, uh, different geometries. Okay, so I'm just going to say degree one, span three, because that there are three spans, basically you can get a triangle. So let's say you want a square all you have to do is increase the number of spans to four, like this, and you get a square. Now, if you want to create a pentagon, like this, and if you want to create a hexagon, like this, and you can, well, let's say, I don't know what uh, a geometry with the 20 edges are, but you can do something like this. Now there are, uh, well, actually at least doesn't really have a tool to create geometries uh, or shapes like these. So this, uh, this comes in very handy when you want to create them. Now, depending on the situation you might want, because this is a single curve that might serve, uh, serve your purpose well, but sometimes because it's a single curve, it might create some problems. So let's say you want to, let's see. I'm going to just do a draft. So let's grab, uh, grab the draft tool like this. And I want to create a hexagon like this. Now, oh, actually this one is okay. Okay, so let me just see what happens if I just create a rail. And you'll see that sometimes that there are guidelines like this. So I'm going to try to delete them. So I'm going to say delete, delete guidelines like this. And I'm going to do a rail. So I'm just going to grab here and here. So you'll see that this is actually a single surface. Now, this might be okay, but if you were to try to do a fill up between these two, it won't work. So in this case, what you have to do, you can either use a draft tool, which seemed to have worked and divided this into six different pieces, or you can use the, uh, the hexagon uh, created from the circle tool as a guideline and just create multiple curves like this. So in this case, actually, let me just hide the original circle like this, and you can use this to create on a hexagon prism like this. And after this, now you can, let's say you want to add a filler like this, so let's say quarter length of 30 and form factor on one, you can do something like that. So it just depends on what you want to do, but these definitely do come in handy, especially when you want to create a perfect pentagon, hexagon, triangle, etc. and etc. Okay, so that concludes this lesson, and thank you guys for watching.